with only 10 full-length feature films to his belt, David Lynch has been described by The Guardian as the most important director of this era. Blue Velvet might contain elements of serialism and appear a little perverse in some aspects. I don't know if you're a detective or a pervert. But it's also the film where his career began to make sense. Before Blue Velvet, there was no comprehensible pattern to Lynch's film choices. Eraserhead in 1977 was a serialist film that could easily be compared to Salvador Dali's Unchan Andalau. It was his first full-length feature film. A low-budget, black-and-white serialist body horror film that dealt with creatures, dreams, bizarre sexual frustration and alien babies. This film has no clear narrative and it could easily be interpreted to countless different meanings. Up next was The Elephant Man in 1980, which was an American historical drama film portraying the life of Joseph Merrick, a severely deformed man in late 19th century London. The film was a huge success and was awarded eight Oscar nominations that year. In 1984, two years before Blue Velvet, Lynch was approached and hired to direct an adaptation of the novel Dune, which was a science fiction film. Unfortunately, this ended as a huge box office failure, yet was still nominated at the Oscars for Best Sound. During interviews, Lynch still prefers not to discuss Dune. Concluding his career in science fiction films, Lynch moved on to his next film, Blue Velvet. Lynch has stated Blue Velvet's story originated from three concepts he started envisioning since 1973. The first was only a feeling along with the title Blue Velvet. The second idea was that of a severed human ear lying in the field. The third was of Bobby Vinton's cover of the song Blue Velvet, along with the mood that came with the song, a time as well as things that were of that time, which were the 50s. This is also evident in the genre, which is neo-noir, and is evident with the lighting choices in much of the film being high contrast with no full light and long shadows, including a detective as protagonist who is also a man of integrity, a criminal as antagonist, one femme fatale woman who is bad, beautiful and mysterious, a second woman who is good in nature yet bland, urban locations, a complex and seemingly far-fetched plot, choker close-ups to heighten intensity, and lastly, a bleak view of humanity. Why are there people like Frank? Why is there so much trouble in this world? Even though Blue Velvet was released 30 years ago, it is truly a masterpiece made before its time. It might have an initial appearance as only a neo-noir mystery, and it's not just about a story being told through means of audio and visual elements. Blue Velvet operates on a vast number of thematic levels and includes strong symbolism. Dreaming is seen by many as prophetic and dreams play a large role in the film. This is the surrealist characteristic that is visible in Blue Velvet. The characters follow dream logic by having a type of clairvoyance. When Sandy emerges from the darkness, she guesses who Jeffrey is. He asks her how she knows and she says that she just knows. The two are fated to meet. The same goes for the blind man who can guess how many fingers somebody is holding up. This doesn't make Blue Velvet a fantasy film with magical elements. It just operates on dream logic, as when people are dreaming, they don't question what does not seem real. Dorothy's name is also a reference to The Wizard of Oz, where Dorothy goes on an adventure within a dream, which Lynch is very fond of. At the end of the film, Jeffrey awakens, figuratively emerging from the symbolic dream of events. Even Ben sings, in dreams to serenade Frank. Sandy tells Jeffrey of the dream she had in which the world was full of darkness, but with a blinding light everything changed and a group of robins signaled that love had returned. Towards the end, this is exactly what happens. Bright light envelops them and shortly after they see a robin with a bug in its mouth, meaning that the darkness and lies have ended and love has conquered all. Earlier in the film, the insects under the ground represent the shadowy underworld beneath the surface of suburban paradise. The theme of insects is recurrent throughout the film. 
the severed ear he finds is also being overrun by a black ant. This is also notable in the bug-like gas mask that Frank uses for his drug, as well as the lie that Jeffrey uses to gain access to Dorothy's apartment. He claims to be an insect exterminator. The severed ear that Jeffrey discovers is also a key symbolic element. As the camera zooms into the rotting ear, it is symbolic of the danger that is about to come. The zoom out of the ear only occurs at the end of the film after the danger has passed. Colours are also used symbolically in Blue Velvet. Blue represents tranquility or attractiveness. Frank is full of anger, fear and lust. He seeks the tranquility of blue when Dorothy sings Blue Velvet under a blue light and drinks Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. He never achieves his own tranquility. He leeches off the tranquility of others, as well as using a gas drug to relieve the conflict within himself. Due to this, he is self-loathing, which can be seen when Frank shouts at Dorothy not to look at him. Don't you fucking look at me! He presents himself as a child and places part of Dorothy's blue nightgown in his mouth to comfort himself. Mommy. Mommy loves you. Baby wants to fuck. He wants this mysterious tranquility. This peace. Red represents a coming danger. They are portrayed in the red velvet curtains in Dorothy's apartment, showing a coming danger. Dorothy's apartment is also red, portraying the danger she surrounds herself with, as well as always having red lipstick on. Frank makes his lips red before kissing Jeffrey, smearing it on him, symbolizing that the coming danger has finally caught up with Jeffrey. The film's introduction scenes are also filled with the coming danger, along with the falseness of the suburban opening. We see bright red roses, a red fire truck, a red stop sign, then we submerge into the shadows of the underworld, hidden from sight, but always there. This red was there the entire time. The danger. The darkness. It was always there, hiding in plain sight. At the end of the film, the characters all wear white, symbolizing love and peace. David Lynch believes that duality, of all things, is a part of life. And this can be seen in Blue Velvet. There are two parts of town, one more suburban, the other more of an underworld, and they are only separated by a single street. There are two women, one dark, mysterious and that attracts danger, the other good-natured, kind and helpful. Everything in Blue Velvet has a narrative and visual opposite. Frank's favorite hangout place is similar in look to the little diner where Jeffrey and Sandy meet in safety. Jeffrey, who is good-natured, is intrigued by and explores the dark underworld. And Frank chases the tranquility of the light. Sandy, in her innocent pink clothes, is the alternate version of Dorothy. Detective Williams is a proud protector of justice, yet his partner, known as the Yellow Man, turns out to be a dirty cop. Jeffrey is intrigued by the darkness, and this is noted by Frank. In the end, Jeffrey ultimately had to embrace the darkness inside of him in order to overcome the danger and darkness threatening him, and then rejects it in the end. He now knows of the existing darkness and awakes from the nightmare of darkness and danger. <laughs>